How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd of Engineering Futures. Today I'm going to show you how to do the 2005 B2B problem for your uh, AP Physics or just Physics class. So let's, let's get to it. Here we have a simple pendulum that consists of a bob of a mass of 0 0.085 kilograms attached to a string that has a length of 1.5 meters. So the length of the string, 1.5 meters. And we have the mass of the bob. The pendulum is raised to point Q which is 0 0.8 meters above its lowest point. So that would be our height component. And it is released so that it oscillates with a small amplitude. So this is our angular displacement as shown below. All right. So A, part one, states, uh, on the figures below, draw a free body diagram showing and labeling the forces acting on the bob um, on each of the situations described. Okay. So at point P, so this is right here. At point P, we see the bob does have a mass times gravity. And it does have a tension that's pulling up in that direction. So those are the, really the only two forces we have acting on it, is the object's weight and the object's tension pulling up. So I think this would be an acceptable answer for A part 1. So A part 2 asks at point uh, when the ball is at its lowest spot. So we're here. So if the ball is at its lowest spot, we would still have the exact same weight vector. And now, so then we still have this component here, but our tension would be up. But now this tension would, would have to be drastically greater. Uh, well, I say drastically, but it'd have to be significantly larger than the weight component. And the reason being, I would argue that, is because the object is in uniform circular motion and there's an acceleration centripetal acceleration, which causes the tension to be greater than the mass times gravity. We know that acceleration is V squared over R. So I would assume that this would also be a correct answer for this. Okay, so that was A. So B, calculate the speed of the bob at its lowest point. Well, we know uh, we have the bob here, and we're just picking it up, and we know how high we pick it up. So the bob actually has potential energy. And at the very, very bottom, all that potential energy gets transferred to kinetic. So we can then simply just set our potential equal to an object's kinetic energy. And then we can solve for the velocity of the bob at its lowest spot. So we know potential energy is mgh. Kinetic energy is mv squared over 2. We can see some things cancel out. Solving for v, we get the square root of 2gh equals v. So that's the velocity at the bottom. So plugging in things, we get 2, and we use 10 as gravity, times 0 0.08, which is my height component. So now we just plug that in, and we get approximately 1.26 meters per second. Okay. Or if you're doing 1 sig fig, I'll give you 1.3 meters per second. Okay, so both of those I would assume would be an acceptable answer. Let's look at part C. So part C is calculate the tension of the string when it's passing through its lowest point. So again, here's our bob. We have mass times gravity, and we have our tension pulling up. Now this object is moving in uniform circular motion. So that means the net force on all our objects is equal to the mass times acceleration. Well, here we have a centripetal acceleration. So this actually works into this, which is mv squared over r, because we know the acceleration in a circle is v squared over r. So taking that, plugging it in here, and we get this. And this looks familiar. That's actually the centripetal force equation. So now all we have to do is solve for this. So our net forces. So as this object's moving in a circle, I teach my kids, any things that center seeking, so any object or any vector that's going towards the center, we make positive. Any vector that's going away from the center, but still in line with the center, we make negative. So the tension in this case is going to be positive. Our mass times gravity is going to be negative. So we're going to plug these in. So these are our forces. So these are going to go right here. So you get tension minus m mass times gravity equals mv squared over r. And we're going to solve for that tension. So tension is equal to mv squared over r plus mg. 
And that actually works out to this, mv squared over r plus g. So that would be the algebraic way to solve this. So now all we have to do is plug in our answers. And the mass of the bob is 0 0.085 times our velocity at the bottom, which is 1.26 squared, all over the radius. And the radius is going to be the length so the radius in this case will be equal to the length of our string, which is 1.5 meters, plus 10. And that gives us right around 0 0.94 newtons. So 0 0.94 newtons. Um, you might get a different answer if, um, if you use G as 9.8, but you should get pretty close to this. You should get close to about 0.9. Um, newtons. So that would be the proper way to do part C. Now let's look at part D. So part D is not a math problem. It's saying describe one modification that could be made to double, that's a very important, double the period of oscillation. So D is how can we double, so what can we do to get two times the period? So we double the period. Now, if we look at our equation, so we look at our equation for a pendulum. This is a pendulum. This is going to be 2 pi times the square root of the length over the gravity. So what I teach my students to do is let's, let's just look at this from a logical standpoint, and then we'll do something called proportions. So when looking at this, um, really the only thing that can change, so example, we want to change this. We want to change our period, what can we do? Well, we can alter the gravity or the length of the string. And both of those would actually allow us to change the actual period, okay? So we know that, for so example, really the only, the only variables you have are length and gravity. Um, remember, 2 pi is a constant, so we don't have to worry about that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're, let's treat this as a proportional problem. So what that means is anything that's changing, you, you change it by that factor. So, for example, our period is going from this, so we're going to double it. So we get, uh, we're going to get two times two times greater. So what we're going to do here is we're going to plug in a two where our period is, and then we're going to do this. Anything that's a constant, we're going to go ahead and just erase it. So what I mean is we have two pi here times square root of L over G. So anything that's a constant, we are going to just get rid of. So example, two pi is a constant, and let's say we're, we're staying on Earth. That means gravity would be a constant. So we actually get this. 2 is e equal to the square root of L. So that means our L would be equal to 4. So how you get that is, remember, when you square both sides to get rid of that, you get a square of this 2. So that means if you increase the length by a factor of 4, um, your period would be double. So that's an acceptable answer for that. You could also do a different route. Let's say you didn't want to change the length. Let's say you wanted to change the gravity. So let's rewrite this. So you get period equals 2 pi L over G. So let's say you want to double the period now. So we're going to double that. Again, that's a constant. And now let's say we're going to keep the length constant. So now we have the square root of 1 over G. All right. So what we have to do now is we're going to square both sides. That gives me 4, and this gives me 1 over G. So therefore, solving for G, the gravity would have to be decreased or be one-fourth the original. So example, if you go to an object, a celestial sphere, where gravity is one-fourth that of Earth's or the object you were on when you took the initial period measurement, it would also change your period by, uh, you know, it would double the period of your pendulum, Okay. So both of these are acceptable answers. Um, if you're looking on an AP test or if you're a teacher trying to grade your students' work, both of these would get full marks. Okay, so I hope you have a great day, and thank you for watching this. Please subscribe.
for more physics and astronomy videos. Uh, those subscriptions really do help. I thank you all. Have a great day.